Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. It is Tuesday. You know what that means. That's going to confuse people on YouTube, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's me, your boy, Big Tasty. As always, I'm joined by Jay. How's it going, Jay? I'm okay. And as a, a special treat, we're joined by Troy. How's it going, Troy? Cold, but good. I was very going to say, you're, you're very rough but warm, Troy. You look like you've That's... been in the woods for the afternoon. That's the most clothes I've ever seen you wear. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm genuinely like shocked that that hasn't got the sleeves cut off on it. <laughs> I've actually got not one sleeve, but two. There's there's Fuck another top hell. underneath here. What, what you can't what you can't see under that under that like neck chief is just top buttons undone. Top two buttons. <laughs> what you can't see, I'm just in my pants below this shirt. <laughs> oh my god, just soaking in a in a paddling pool of rum. <laughs> yes, boy. <laughs> Uh, right, yeah, um, it's, yeah. We'll, we'll pop straight into into a bit of wrestling talk, uh, a week of wrestling, because there's a lot of wrestling to talk about this week. Um, I think Jay's seen most of it because you, you've, by virtue of you now having weekends off, you've become some sort of like pay per view watching machine. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm trying to think if I did miss anything. I don't think I did. Well, should we start with with you, Jay, and start with um, we'll, we'll we'll ease Troy in. Do you want to start with any any of the WWE that you saw this weekend? Uh, I saw the NXT one, which I don't know if you guys are covering <clears throat> this week, Troy. We'll probably NXT. give it, yeah, we'll 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 do something on that as well as this week's episode. I started watching it yesterday. I had a hectic weekend uh, between a couple of birthday parties, yeah. but when I got back uh, last night, I started watching Deadlines. So I've seen. The first match, so the the women's Iron Survivor match, um, I thought it was quite fun. Like the the format on paper sounds like a clusterfuck, and it's it, for those who don't know, it's essentially King of the Mountain without the ladder part. Yeah, so, so how do you win? It's the most so pinfalls it's, after twenty five. Oh, like, so it's an Iron Man match with a penalty box. It's basically. an Iron Man match with a penalty box, yeah, and right, a gaunt, okay. like a gauntlet, then, a gauntlet then, Iron Man yeah, match. It, it's like um, every five. Kind of like an Iron Man match crossed with a championship scramble, crossed with King of the Mountain. Um, crossed, crossed with, like, Shawn Michaels' fucking acid flashbacks. <laughs> I mean, the, there's there's a lot of TNA guys in, in NXT right now, isn't I mean, there? Jer- Jeremy Borash is there, so there's a Jeremy chance Jeremy Borash, he... Road Dogg's there. <laughs> Abyss. Abyss. There's a chance that some of them. There's a ch- I mean, Jeff Jarrett has been there. There's a lot of, like, you know, he's Jeff, left some. He's left some. Jeff like, Jarrett's, just... like, Handover notes to Jeremy Borash was make sure they do King of the Mountain. <laughs> yeah, just, just do King of the Mountain. It's like you know when a uh, like teacher hands these to the and it's like they probably pitched it to like Shawn Michaels and he's just look he's looked at one of them. We don't know which one, um, and then he's probably gone. I don't understand it. Yeah, he so probably then. just read like the first sentence of the rules. So I just wing it. It'll be... <laughs> I think I got the yeah. gist of it. I think this is I think this is kind of what they wanted. <laughs> he's probably just been like, what so like. Me and Brett at Mania Twelve, just with more pinfalls. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so well, who was in this this NXT Iron Survival um, match? So there, was, there was a men's and a women's, wasn't there? The women's was the yeah, one that I thought, kicked it off. I thought the men's was much better. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it yet, so the men, I, I, I the know the winners. Was, uh, so the men's one was really entertaining. Uh, the the women's one was, I think the the problem one the women's one had was that. It was obviously like a lot of people who were kind of developed. You could tell clearly developmental, whereas mm. the men's one was pretty much largely, if if not all, guys who were already like readily established. Mm. Um, I don't know. All... Saying that, like the women's one had Zoe Stark in, she's pretty well established. Yeah, Indy Hartwell, had, pretty had well Roxanne established. Perez. Roxanne, yeah. yeah. But... I, I was thinking of Keanu James. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Very good. I, I agree. Um, and Cora Jade's fine. She she did. It, to be fair, Cora Jade's heel work was pretty good in, yeah. in that match. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it it was that one was okay. the men's one. I thought was fantastic. I really thought like they they were really clever with kind of the way they worked into they worked the penalty box into the match. Mm. Um, in the sense of like obviously people people getting pinned, talk to the penalty box. They, they had a few times with their JD McDonough and Axiom, where obviously because they're feuding, um, they both got pinned at similar times and then ended up fighting in the penalty box while, like, 
what essentially so, why what you're telling me is it was like the mighty ducks the film yes <laughs> um but that was it was it was really fun um i thought jd mcdonald's well, that love with the bandana who like goes on twat and everyone <laughs> he, he's the one he's the one who can't stop <laughs> uh, oh what's his name the... Summer, Mendoza. Is it? Summer Mendoza is the guy who can't Luis Mendoza there you go he's the one who can't stop um, yeah that sounds like JD McDonough come at me yeah. with my fucking Mighty Ducks knowledge mate I'll fucking smoke you <laughs> try yeah. me um, it, it was it was a fun match as I say the, um, the like kind of later entrance because obviously they've got less time in the match um, and le- obviously less time to have a pinfall. When they'd come in, there was much more a sense of urgency. Like, Joe Gacy was in last, and he was like a house of fire, just like trying to kind of catch so, up. So, so, so tactically, it was like a trade-off. So if you, if obviously if you start... So it, it wasn't like war games where you can't do anything until everyone's in. It was like, no. if you start early, you can rack up points. But, but you're not yeah, if, the end. But if you come in late, you're fresh, and you can just bleep b- b- bulldoze. You can just bulldoze people, mm. yeah, yeah, pretty much, which is what happened. Um, no, I... I, I I had my reservations about it. I thought it can either it's either going to be really good or it's going to fall flat. I thought it was pretty. I thought it was a really entertaining match. And um, so, as someone who doesn't really watch NXT but has seen a few bits from, from Sarah watching it, like over the last few weeks, one thing I, I really kind of liked about it is it kind of gave like both divisions like something to sort of anchor onto. There was a lot of like talk about like who was going to be in it, like what the tactics were going to be. Like I saw a couple of segments where they had like all the guys out in the middle of the ring talking about it, and it just it just it, it felt big, like it felt like a big deal, but, like even before the pay per view came around. Hmm. Yeah, I think they needed something to kind of really make that show feel big because obviously they moved war games to the main roster and that that did it that it it felt kind of like um to to sort of like give wrestle island their their air flowers here it felt kind of like the the prelude room rumbled it right yeah in that sense but it was obviously we've got the royal rumble coming up next and that was it i was a similar sort of mechanic of people coming in and Except it didn't have Casey Payne doing an up and over and then booting a beloved Polish man in the face. No, it didn't. <laughs> it's like Polish Barry. Yeah. <laughs> it, he, he kicked Polish Barry so hard there's some Barry variants just like wandering around. Not, not, not sure what's going on. Yeah, he, he basically, you, you saw the end of Doctor Strange. It was basically that, but in, in a wrestling match. <laughs> kicked, it, kicked his astral plane out. <laughs> kicked, kicked him into another dimension. <laughs> uh, so was there anything else on the card? Uh, or was it just... I'm, I'm guessing uh, those two matches took a lot of time. The women's, there was Alba Fire against... Um, Fuck, well, I've forgotten the name. Isla, Isla Dawn. Um, that was a silly finish. <laughs> was it? Oh, with the referee. She, like, booped the referee and he started doing black six on himself. <laughs> I mean, mate, have you seen two women fighting outside a Glaswegian bar? It's, like, it's, it's very similar. <laughs> uh, as I as I said, like, the the essentially, essentially, like, Scottish gimmicks in WWE, it's either you're a descendant of a warrior or you're a druid. <laughs> How, what it. says Celtic? <laughs> yeah. just like, so, so um, reviewing this one, is Aaron just going to rock up with like a deep fried Mars bar in like sort of solidarity? <laughs> no, Aaron's. I think Aaron's going to hate it. To be honest, yeah, <laughs> I think he's going to absolutely. It's hate it. Two Scottish wrestlers, and it's women. He's going to hate it. <laughs> to me, it's women. He's going to hate yeah. it. Yeah, and um, one one of them, someone he likes, who they're really like, kind of doing dirty. Mm. And the other is a kickboxing witch. Mm. Kickboxing witch. Um, witch. I mean, he, he's, to be fair, he's also going to be really cross with the winner of the men's and survivor match as well. Mm. Isn't he? No, well, he called it. He called that. He, he did call it. Yeah, exactly. That. Uh, Aaron, Aaron's prophecy like prophesized this for like months. So yeah. Yeah. he's gonna he's gonna hate every minute of it. But he, he did call it. Um, other two matches on there were the NXT Championship, Bron Breaker and Apollo Crews. Oh, and of course, and of course, the New and Day. of course, the biggest talking point coming out of it: the New Day against Pretty Deadly, and New Day are <clears throat> triple crown champions now with the I, NXT Championships. I think I'm more excited with that for the rematch than I'm, I am the like. I thought the I thought that match was really good, mm. but I think there's because it was like kind of shoehorned onto the show. Where they, there wasn't, they pretty much announced it like on the go home, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. I think now they've got like that out the way and they can get a bit of build behind it. I think the rematch is going to 
which yeah, like, the, the moment was the moment was awesome when the new music hit was great. Mm, yeah. But like you say, I'd love to see. I mean, I'm not going to watch it, but I'd love to I'd love to be a like a, like like you say, like a prolonged build. Like let them go back and forth on the mic a bit. <clears> let um <throat> like you put Woods and and, and Kofi in the in there with Pretty Deadly. That's going to be gold. Mm. That's going to be so so good. We all yeah, on the it, review it, last. It, oh, sorry, go on, Jay. Uh, I was going to say it's it's shown kind of moments of potential greatness, but it I feel because of the lack of build from it, it did kind of hurt a little bit mm. because as you say because they're two teams that they've really got kind of like charisma and they've really got like talking chops and I think that's what I'd like a bit more because it, it didn't feel as if it, it didn't it didn't feel as if there was like enough of a build around it to sort of justify the, the match happening mm. yeah and, and who doesn't want to see Xavier Woods just go all in on a bunch of uh, effeminate Tories <laughs> Exactly. We all called it on, on the review the other week when we are doing our predictions. It, it, it makes perfect sense for, for New Day to get it at the moment because NXT are just about to go back on the road with their shows. So Vengeance Day is going to be in Charlotte, I believe. They've been in the Performance Center now for like, what, two years or so? <clears throat> or the better part be, of two years? Yeah, be, it'll be since lockdown, wasn't it? Yeah. And so what better way to kind of start reestablishing the brand than to put one of the most recognisable teams, not just in WWE, but like in the world. They've got the titles. Not only do they elevate the titles, they elevate the other teams in the division on NXT. And they also bring a lot of eyes to NXT. Now they're starting to go back on the Sorry, I, I, just remember, I just remember the last time they tried to do something like this was with Dolph Ziggler. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> I think as well. Um, like the, the other, the other thing, it, it feels, it feels almost like a kind of like make good for the new day because obviously they've like just had the like tag team re- record like eclipsed by the Usos. Mm. So it's like, oh yeah, we'll we'll give you something that they've not done. Yeah. Until yeah. you unify the belts like in three weeks' time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the rumble. They'll do win take all. Yeah, and that's it. Um, so is it now just? Is it just uh, the new day and FTR who've done this now? Um, uh, I yeah. think. Uh, did Alpha Academy win the Raw Rans SmackDown, or just one of them? Alpha Academy. Won Alpha. The... Sorry, not oh. Alpha Academy. American Alpha, rather. The originals <clears throat> on the SmackDown. Just SmackDown. Yeah. Okay. But Jason Jordan went to Raw to be Kurt Angle's black son. <laughs> uh, right, should, Stop should we it. move along? Should we move along? Gonna leave the rest of that for Aaron to dissect. Oh, I yeah. can't, can't wait for that. <laughs> I, I, I was gonna say, there's a show I'd much rather kind of like get get elbow deep into when we're talking about stuff and wait, like sort of like well, dig should, through. Should we blast through AEW and then we'll have a proper go at Ring of Honor? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Go on. Because uh, there was some, oh, I mean, there was some bits in AW that I mean, I, I I enjoyed AW this week. I don't think there was anything like must see. I mean, mm. whoa, whoa now. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, apart from that promo whoa. that you're probably going to talk about. Whoa now. Uh, so we started out with the um, with the Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal. Uh, yeah. That was one. It was a really fun match. It was again, it was that AW thing we talked about it last week. AW do that thing they're really good at, where they weave storylines through Battle Royals by who eliminate two. Like they they managed to set up. Like one, one thing I didn't think I wanted to see until but it was Kip Sabian and Gold Dust are having a or like and Dustin Rhodes are having a, a feud now out of this because they eliminated they they had they had interactions, um yeah so that was that was kind of cool. Ricky Starks didn't, won. Didn't Kip eliminate Orange as well? And that's kind Kip of did like eliminate Orange. So yeah, so, so it's kind of Kip wants Orange, but like Dustin's there to just you know fuck Kip over like. Well, Kip, had... Kip blamed Dustin for like essentially him getting eliminated because he was like. Joe Jack into Orange and then Dustin just threw him out. Yeah. Um. Then who did W. Morrissey kick in the face? Was it Jungle Boy? It was uh, Jungle Boy. Wasn't Jungle it? Boy, and then he did that scatty looking choke slam. Oh, yeah, that was. Oh, do you, have you seen this trick? No, Jungle no. Boy. So Big Bill picks up Jungle Boy for a choke slam and basically mm. slams him like shoulders first onto the, the side of the ring. Even it looked, the it looked like it looked like the base of his skull hit the apron, which Ooh. was horrible. It was really like it, it was. He was fine afterwards, but it was like mm, yeah. in the moment, it scuffed, and it was like. Uh, we had um, Ethan Page was the last man in alongside uh, Ricky Stark, so they had that little throwback to the to the final of the of the um, eliminated tournament, which was nice. So apparently, um, it was meant to be Miro in this role. All right, which uh, was something that Meltzer uh, came up with this week, where like because there was the thing, wasn't there, with um, obviously Miro not having anything for him. Apparently, Tony Khan pitched 
like Miro to be in the role that Ethan Page was in. Um, and Miro said he didn't, he didn't want to do so. Fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so then after that, then we had that promo, and I'll let Jay talk about that. Oh, oh boy. I, I was, so I initially, I had the absolute fear that they were just going to have MJF come out and just bury the shit out of Starks. First thing he did was call him the pebble and just like say, oh yeah, you're just like a dollar store rock. And I was just <laughs> like, oh no, he just called him dollar store Dwayne, didn't he as well? Yeah. Um, and Ricky Starks is just kind of stood there, just taking it in. And I was like, oh God, Ricky, you're going to have to fucking come back with some like nuclear responses here. Otherwise you're fucking, <laughs> you're fucked. Um, I like Starks just stands there nodding his head walks past MJF and like kind of like blasts him with his shoulder as he's walking past and then gets a mic and just turns around like cold as fucking ice. I thought he was going to take the mic out of his hand. I liked it better that he went and got his own mic. He just like because... barged past him and yeah, went and got his own. Because it gave MJF the option to reply which because he left MJF speechless mm. it was so much more impactful than if he had took the mic and MJF didn't have a microphone to reply. He gave MJF the option to then have a retort and he couldn't come up with anything. That's which good. Was, That's really good. And yeah, Ricky, Ricky, first thing he did, Ricky called him Maxi Pad, which was hilarious. <laughs> um, and then he was essentially like saying to MJF, oh yeah, while, while you like sort of stormed off and sp- spat your dummy because you weren't getting the money you wanted, I stayed and I fought for my spot. I fought to like get up the card and I had to like deal with my best friend turn on me and He's like, I, the difference between me and you is I've got integrity and I've got like morals and I've, I, I'm, I like take that title off you and essentially be the champion the company deserves. And he, he said, um, what was the line he said? he said? He said, I think already with your hit and regal, you could, it's already getting to you. It's already sort of. He was saying about how like he, he went on for years about how he wanted to be AW World Champion, but now he's got it. The responsibilities on him now and he can't handle it. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And he's like, let me take the responsibility off. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. Like, and, like, and obviously this, this was in um, like his adopted what was in the yeah, actual hometown. Yeah, his it, adopted his adopted hometown. Town. Sorry, and yeah, the crowd were like red hot for him. They were super behind him. It was it was. Re- I mean, you, you saw. I mean, you must have seen like the, the sort of fallout on Twitter of people saying like, this is this is Ricky Starks now announcing himself as as a main event guy in AW. Like this is yeah. this is this is his moment. Like like he's he's arrived basically. Yeah, and Jeff did mention he, he made the um, comment about Ricky Starks coming from NWA as well, which was like that for me was like oh fuck that's a death knell. Like that's that's it. Yeah, he, he said like he said like I'm going to send you back to. Um, Wrestling on YouTube for uh, that Billy guy. Co- who- Billy Corgan said WA. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, it, like ev- everything that MJF said, Ricky had a retort to, and Ricky had like, I, as I say, it, it, it's very rare you see that MJF gets like the better of him in a promo. I think the only other one was the punk one earlier in the year where like you see MJF kind of like walking off like with like his sort of tail between his legs. And MJF looked, he had that look on him, then he, he kicks Ricky in the balls. And as Ricky goes down, he like he goes to get the dynamite diamond ring, and he as he's about to like line up Ricky to hit with it, Ricky do- like ducks underneath and like murdered him with a spear. Like both of his he, shoes flew off. It was it was that good. He, he fucking quantum leaped into MJF's stern. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's how hard he hit him. Um, yeah, it no, was it was, it, it was great. It was really. I really mean, good. I'll be honest, and obviously I'm biased because Ricky Starks one of my favorites, but for me that was one of the best like promo segments of the year. It was so fucking good. Do you know what the was, sad I, thing about it is? Mm-hmm. Ricky Starks won't win the belt. Not yet. And that's what's sad about it. Because I want to no, see no, this, but I want to see it down the line when I know that he's got a chance of winning it. Yeah, but, you, yeah, but he's got to have this match to make you think that he can hang. Even though we know he can. Yeah, but uh, in terms of like, because yeah. Ricky Starks has never had like uh, a like main high event. profile, yeah, yeah, like yeah. main event spot. So he needs to like, he needs to come close here. Mm. Like MGF will do some dickery and like win by like, mm. like we... real means, and then like like six months down the line, he'll have another shot, and it'll be like, oh shit, now he's coming for it. Now he mm. knows, mm. you know, he's, yeah. he's smarter now. I, I think as well, we spoke about this last week, didn't we? Were like MJF pretty much in the promo we cut last week, sort of paved that paved the way for like three guys who. Were pretty Maybe four who are likely to dethrone him. Um, 
in the sense that you like mentioned Eddie Kingston, he was like, he'll never be a world champion, which means for me, Eddie Kingston's probably going to be the guy who the thrones him. <laughs> um, he said Ricky Starks couldn't hang, he said Jungle Boy and uh, Darby Allen couldn't either. And it was basically like everyone he named in that, and Daniel, uh, Brian Daniels, Brian Daniels. Yeah. Uh, everyone named in that, it's like, well, that's MJF's like next six months of feud right there. It's yeah. nice as well that as MJF moved up to like become world champion, Ricky Starks has kind of replaced him on that, like sort of underneath pillar like category. So it used to be Ricky Stark, it used to be, sorry, it used to be um, MJF, Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, and Sammy Guevara. And now they're talking about Ricky Starks in that same group of people. Mm-hmm. And well, Sammy we, we always, and Sammy Guevara's always kind of been kind like of... shoved off to the side because, yeah, reasons. Yeah. We always kind of alluded to Ricky as like the fifth pillar as well, didn't we? Like he's, yeah. he, he's, he's the guy, like he's a fucking workhorse. He can do whatever he, whatever is asked of him on a show. He's always going to deliver, whether he's just doing commentary, whether he's doing a backstage promo, whether he's having like a five minute match with somebody. He's always going, going to maximize his kind of like minutes. So, even though like this is like MJF's first feud, and for I think for a lot of people, it's like, all right, well, this is like the kind of you know, it, it, it's obvious he's not going to beat MJF. At the same time, it's laying the groundwork for when it comes back round to Ricky, which is what's nice with the like kind said, of... It's, like it's, it's just about elevating, it's about making you think yeah. you believe that he can do it. Not necessarily uh, him doing it, but you just, just get, getting that, getting people to associate Ricky Starks with being the main, the main event scene in AW. And that's, that's what yeah. I think this is all about. I, I feel I feel like it's similar to like with uh, Jurassic Express, where they, got, they were getting closer and closer and closer to winning the tag titles to when they finally did, where you didn't see it coming. If they can do that with Ricky Starks winning the world title or even the TNT title, mm. that's already like a cool position for him to be in. Um, and also the most important thing, he's on fucking television. Like the yeah, he, he hadn't been on TV properly for ages except as for, for this tournament. Yeah, because he he'd been dealing with injuries. Mm. All right, right. Moving on then, we'll we'll, we'll blast through the rest because that was sort of like the meat of the, the thing we really wanted to talk about. Uh, next up, we just got yeah. to see Samoa Joe legitimately murder Darby Allen. Yeah. Um, again, like the moments, the moments of this moment. Buster onto an upturned skateboard. It was one of the <laughs> most upsetting things I've ever seen in my life. That makes me warm and fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, remember that? You know that spot that Joe does where he just sort of like walks away as someone jumps off the top rope? Yeah. He did that as Darby went through a suicide dive to the outside and Darby just like went into the concrete. Like, I, back I saw that clip. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> There's also that, like several spots where he just takes Darby up and like slams him into the guardrail like as hard as he can. So yeah, it was. If if you if if you if you're a fan of watching Darby Allen get the actual shit beaten out of him, then, then this match was a really good, really fun one. Um, yeah, Joe won obviously because he's going to have that title for a while, I think. Obvious. Um Yeah. Next up, a match I didn't really. This is the only match I didn't really care about. Well, yeah. I mean, Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta taking on Jake Hager and Daniel Garcia. There was literally no reason to really care about this match. I don't think. Yeah, it was, it was fine. It was it, it was fine, work. but it, yeah, it did nothing for me. Was it to get yeah. a couple of the guys that were on the then subsequent Ring of Honor show on TV the week before it was going to happen? I think so. Yeah, I think it was like just. A, I think it was sort of to put over Uther and Claudio being like mates. Mm. Mm. It, it feel if it, it felt like for months they're trying to kind of establish Claudio and Uther as like a tag team as well as being singles guys. Mm. Like they did the stare down with FTR at the end of um, Death Before Dishonor. They've they they're the only two members of the Blackpool Combat Club who like consistently tag together as well. Yeah. Um. So it feels like they're kind of like just sort of solidifying them as like a tag team. So the acclaimed have someone else they can beat. They're the nice Makes ones because Moxley and Danielson are a bit weird, aren't they? Like these guys are like they're just sort of oh yeah they'll tag together. They like each other. Uh, next up we had Jay Cargill and the Baddies featuring the returning Red Velvet. Um, taking on the team of Sky Blue, Kira Hogan, former buddy, uh, Madison Rain. Again, this was fine. Madison Rain still hasn't quite clicked in AW, I don't think, but she's getting better. Uh, this match was just the baddies going to work on everyone, and then Jay Cargo came in and got the win on Madison. So, yeah, Jay just looks strong again. It's, it's again just a vessel to sort of make Jade look like it, it feel, a badass. It feels like they're trying to sort of like set up Jade versus Kiera. Yeah. But they don't really know. Like, they're, they're sort of spinning the wheels because it's all. It's obvious it's probably happening at Battle of the Belts. I don't think it'll happen at Winter's coming now, but no. it just feels like they're sort of spinning the wheels to get and, there. And, that, and that's not a Revolution match, is it? That's like you say, that's got Battle of the Belts written all over it. Yeah. I think Revolution might be Red Velvet versus Jade after the little look they had. Ooh, okay. Or if, if, if Statlander's fit, maybe if she can come back. 
Outlander should dethrone Jade, I think. Mm, especially now, yeah. Um, and then the main event, uh, the acclaimed VFTR, the rematch, or the, the, oh, the big match. This, I mean, th- this was great. So this, I mean, FTR had a, uh, spoilers, FTR had a hell of a week this week. <laughs> spoilers, uh, FTR had two fucking, like, bangers. Yeah. Uh, in case you were wondering, <laughs> in case you had any doubt, um, this was this was phenomenal. Um, really, really fun match. Yeah, um, yeah, just just really good tag team action, wasn't it? And it, the acclaimed, yeah. everyone says like, oh, I think p- people are running out of excuses for to, to sort of explain away why the acclaimed keep having really good tag team matches. Yeah, it, it's it's one of them, isn't it? Like the, when you think they're like one of those teams from AW that were just like there were two guys they signed, they threw them in a the team. And you're like, we're gonna make these guys all like homegrown team. Like the first time they ever and wrestled together was on dark. Like, well, yeah, it's been like what two and a half years they've been tagging them. Yeah, and like two and a half years team with the same person. They're gonna they're going to get better. As as we kind of said, like when they first like sort of started, it was like Bones and Cast are both good wrestlers. They just need to kind of get like get a bit more like experience under the belt as a team, which they have done now. Yeah. And the story of this match was very much... Uh, I think it's a story we've seen before from FDR. So Cash goes for high risk. Uh, he goes for like a springboard and it, it doesn't work. And then Bowens hits the arrival. Uh, Max hits the mic drop and the uh, claim pick up the win. Yeah, really, really fun main event. Uh, on to Rampage real quick. Um, I can't remember what the middle match was, but the opening match, which was Takeshita versus John Moxley, was a fucking banger. It was It was beautiful. How do you how do you get ratings on Rampage? Two words, Kanosuke Takeshita. Just up to cash that going like a murdering spree. <laughs> there was a lovely oh. moment where like Moxie was like, because Moxie was like, the whole point was like, Moxie was like, I'm going to teach you. Like, this is like, welcome to America. You know, welcome back to AW. And Moxie's like, I'm going to teach you how, how we do things here. At one point, Moxie just like, open palms, slaps the cash right across the face. And the cash just slaps him right back. Yeah. So, what I really liked about this was obviously the first time before Moxie like, bust him open like immediately. Yeah. And to cash to just look like, look like he was out of his element. And in this one, like about two minutes into it, to catch the like big booted mocks and open them up, <laughs> it was just like, oh fuck, here we go. <laughs> um, there was that amazing spot where to catch the like kicked out of one of the Death Rider, and yeah. Moxie looked like he'd seen a fucking ghost or something. <laughs> um, and yeah, Moxley won by uh, choking him out with the bulldog choke. He did, yeah, he choked him, choked him to to, to unconsciousness basically, yeah, um, which was yeah. lovely. Um, what else do we have in the middle? Did we have? Uh, oh, it was, the, um, the, what was it, Bunny Vishida? Wasn't it? Hmm? Was it Bunny Vishida? Yeah, it was. That was good. That was actually really good. I enjoyed that, enjoyed okay. that a lot. There was some penalty forward fuckery and in there the as winner, well. The winner faced, uh, faces Jamie Hayter on Dynamite this week. Yeah, so after, after, afterwards, yeah. Jamie Hayter came out and challenged Sheeta, which is going to fucking slap. If you want to see two women just hit each other very hard. Uh, I think I think women hitting each other very hard is going to define Jamie Hayter's title reign. Yeah. yeah. Jamie Hayter is going to do what that to, for that women's title, what John Moxley did for the AW title. Yeah, or what Mira did for the TNT title. Yeah. Um, uh, what, was the, what was the throwaway match? It was a squash, wasn't it? Uh, Athena versus... Somebody, I think. Oh yeah, she just picked it. Murdered. Oh, there, it... there was that bit where she like no sold around those kid. Yeah, and she just laughed at that girl and then just murdered her. And then <laughs> in the main event, we had um, Orange Cassidy defending the Atlantic title against an opponent of Kip Sabian's choosing, who turned out to be Wolverhampton's finest, Trent Seven. Yes, boy. That's it's the only reason we got Trey on this week to talk about Trent Seven. <laughs> Certified. What, East East Midlander, Midlander. Would you say? East uh, Mids or... West, 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 West Midlands, Black Country. West Midlands, Black Country certified. Right. Yeah, West Midlands. Are Troy Grant to talk all about Trent Seven. Ah, he's just good, isn't he? You, you must have met him down the pub. Like everyone knows each other around there, surely. <laughs> you know. I didn't meet him down the pub. However, my workmate used to drink with him. And, oh, fair. <laughs> but never followed wrestling. Didn't know he was like. Didn't know like. Obviously knew who he was, but didn't knew know. Um, kind of notoriety that he had. So I remember I was talking about it and he was just like, oh yeah, I know. Drank for ages down the pub, like for, <laughs> for years. And I'm, he was like, oh, I think my, my girlfriend or wife or whatever used to work with him. Um, yeah, he's excellent, just... isn't he? Like we, like yeah. it was the best part or one of the best parts about NXT UK for the, the time it was about and, and we reviewed it and yeah. 
the amount of times we'd wax <laughs> lyrical telling. about you know his, his matches, his storytelling in in and out of the ring. Um, so I haven't seen this match. I hear it was very good. Yeah, um, spoiler, yeah, he put on a very good match with Orange Cassidy. I mean, yeah. I think I think it's quite easy to put on a good match with Orange Cassidy, but he did a very good job. Uh, there, there was uh, he, so like Orange can work like any sort of style, and like, he obviously he has that sort of comedy element. Um, but Trent was just like, yeah, let's just do strong style. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like okay. <laughs> or, or, Orange's chest was like purple. He turned Orange's chest into pulled. Um, nice. Yeah, it was really fun. A really hard hitting match. Um, it told a bit of an interesting story in the sense that Trent was like just there to have a good match, and obviously like Kip and uh, Penelope were there just doing fuckery. Like they brought the butcher and the blade out to brawl with Chuck and Trent. Um, Kip and Dan Housen were having like a bit of a thing back and forth. Um, and yeah, eventually Orange does pick up the win. And then after the match, like Kip's kind of like trying to, he's trying to like bully Trent into like attacking Orange, isn't he? Like, Trent yeah, Trent, Trent, like, Trent was in a really tough position because obviously he was like this big surprise and everyone was like really hyped to see him, but he was also like working for the heel. So it was kind of, yeah. he was kind of in like a, a sort of weird halfway house. Mm -hmm. And after the match, he sold that as well. He was like, he didn't really want to beat up Orange Cassidy, but Kip was like, yo, I'm paying you, mate. Yeah, it's like, we just had a really good match. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. And Saying Kip that. Was, Kip was like screaming, like, I brought you here. So he just starts stamping on Orange. Saying that, he should just come off the back of NXT UK where he turned heel anyway. So yeah, if he did Big come into AEW, yeah, but as then a then yeah, but then NXT UK got like Thanos snapped away. So don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, what one thing that was mad was like he got like literally no reaction, did he? Did he not? Like no, he really. It was like fucking crickets, and I was like, oh shit, poor Trent. And then within like five minutes, he was they were getting this is awesome chance. So yeah. I mean, I mean it's, he's, he's it's, 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 it's a shocker that the, the, the fan base of AEW and NXT UK didn't have much overlap. Who could have possibly? <laughs> no, but I mean, NXT UK wasn't big in Texas. It turns out. Um, <laughs> strong style been in uh, Chicago, mate. Yeah, do you think anyone? The... Do you think anyone in Texas watching that Chicago nonsense? They, they've been <laughs> no, that's true. They've been on BTE. Um, what one thing as well, which was cool, was they did a little teaser of. Um, Dustin Rhodes versus Trent Seven, which yes, please. Yeah. Ooh. That little stare down the had and then the brawl. I was like, yeah, fucking yeah, give man. me that. Hook that right up to my veins. Just put that, throw that on Winter's coming. Give him, give him like six, seven minutes to just slap the piss out of each other. <laughs> right. Having that, then we'll, we'll have a, we'll have a, a sort of quickish run through Ring of Honor because we are going a little long here. We can, we can do it. It's, we, we got time. It's fine. We, we yeah. can be a bit indulgent in this section. We'll just, we'll just not, have to, well, we'll just not be talking about Jamie Noble. There we go. We'll cross that off. Um, <laughs> sorry, Jamie. Um, we, we, we need to talk about uh, AR Fox getting murdered by Rouge. Um, Shoot murdered by Rouge. So, yeah, so the, the pre-show was really fun. We had um, Top Flight against, was it Top Flight for the Kingdom? It was the OGK, yeah, which was a banger. Yeah, that was really good. The King, I think, I think I, I was a little worried when the Kingdom rocked up in AW because I was like, oh fuck, these guys are just going to be like floating around doing fuck all. I think Ring of Honor is where they're going to really find their, their home, isn't it? Oh yeah, I mean it was weird because they teased that they were going to go into a feud with FTR and then fuck all happened. Yeah, because FTR oh, were like, oh. we're not working with these jobbers. <laughs> well, I I know that like Dax Howard in the past has had like heat with um Matt Taven, so I think everyone had heat maybe... with Matt Taven to be fair. Mate, yeah, maybe legitimately. <laughs> Axe has gone fuck that. I'm not working with him. That, that doesn't work for me, brother. Doesn't work for me, brother. Yeah. Okay, so um, we had that. That was fun. Um, Willow and Trisha Dora was Willow and Trisha Dora. That was great. It was the fucking Hosset fight. Yeah, that was lovely. Um, yeah, what was that move? Uh, Trisha Dora did something to Willow. It's like, a, um, it was like a stretch muffler, wasn't it? But she was like, she had a held, like, deadlifted up. Yeah. And Willow won, with a, Willow won with a Dr. Von that looked like a war crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Willow's Dr. Von. It's so fucking scatty. Um, yeah. What else uh, do we have? We had, um... Oh, there was another match. Uh, 2.0 versus uh, Shinobi Sh uh, Strike Squad. Shinobi Shadow Squad. Or Shadow Squad. Yeah. Cheeseburger remains the most overman in Ring of Honor. It's uh, it's phenomenal, isn't it? He is, he is an enigma. I, I, I really, really hope the cheeseburger shows up at, at uh, Wrestle Kingdom this year just to get the cheeseburger pop. <laughs> <laughs> Always, like, lose this shit. Like, it's fucking Kenny Omega coming out whenever he rocks up. 
Yeah, you got to see Daddy Magic just get like cocaine angry at Cheeseburger, which was. Uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when he was screaming, shake that man's hand! Um, that was that was a treat. I, I enjoyed that. Um, also, oh, we, uh, also we got yeah. to hear we got to hear Super Nose music, which is one of the best theme tunes in all of wrestling. Yeah, it's like proper like Miami Vice music, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Jeff Cobb versus uh, Mascara Dorado. Uh, yeah, just give Jeff Cobb whatever he asks for, like money wise. Yeah. Just give him it all. <laughs> that just to be fair, the two of them had so much chemistry. Yeah, like yeah. I'd I'd happily watch that again. On commentary, they did a little teaser. That for, anyone, might... sorry, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Mascara Dorado is the former Grand Metal League from yeah. WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a little teaser as well on a uh, commentary that uh, we might be getting Jeff Cobb versus Samoa Joe, which, yeah, oh, when. fucking hell. <laughs> oh, <When>. God. <laughs> they, 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 said, they said, oh, yeah, Jeff Cobb's, um, Jeff Cobb's like one of the best uh, TV champions we've ever had. We'd like to see him versus Samoa Joe. I was like, yeah. You'd have, I, to, do that, you'd have to do that in a room made entirely of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> Just for safe, like a bunker, just for safety reasons. Just, Battersea just, power just station. Do it. <laughs> do it. Do it on like an aircraft carrier in international waters, just so everyone's safe. <laughs> like, like, like a fucking Street Fighter stage. <laughs> yeah, but then if Samoa Joe muscle busters Jeff off the uh, ship, we're all fucked because a massive tsunami will come for us. <laughs> oh, a world-ending tsunami. Uh, yeah, so onto the show proper, and like, so I'm not saying I'm not saying I had high expectations. I, I, I weirdly was like not that jazzed for the show because I was like I was in work when it started, and I had been working all weekend and. It started at a weird time. Um, it was an early one, wasn't it? Yeah, but but when it's a show late. kicks off with AR Fox and Blake Christian versus Roosh and another one of Roosh's brothers who happens to be like a five star luchador because he's just I'm guess I'm guessing he's just got like a clown car of like great wrestling talent in his family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was this is Roosh's brother who isn't Dragon Lee who is also fucking excellent at wrestling. Who who we've actually um, I think we've actually seen at a Ring of Honor show. No oh, right, like years ago, uh, it was either him or the original Mister Go, who's the original <laughs> Sinkara, or who's another now... who's also somehow related to Rouge for some reason, probably. <laughs> no, so <laughs> Drillistico got Mystico's gimmick when Mystico went to WWE and become right. Sinkara, and then Mystico lost. Uh, original Sinkara got fired, and Hunico becomes Sinkara, who's now Sinter de Oro, and then. Drillistico left CMLL and become Drillistico, and then original Mystico became original Mystico, became Mystico 2, I think, or Mystico again. Fuck me, this, is where, this, this, this is where the commentators in AAA take fucking coke, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but speak, speaking of um, speaking of Mexican wrestling, uh, Roosh thought he was in fucking Arena Mexico, didn't he, when he... Uh, when, so, so, right, let's, let's, so the match was really fun. And, the and we'll, match was we'll, awesome. We'll it was really it was good. amazing. AR, AR Fox, I mean... Finish. Yeah, AR Fox by Christian because it was just for three flippy boys and then Roosh just striding around like the God of War, just ending tools. <laughs> it was Ro- great. Roosh was just angry that he couldn't do the flippy stuff, so he was just hitting people really hard. Roosh <laughs> just spent like a large portion of that match just throwing Blake Christian into things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so the match was kind of Dr- weird. Let, it, let's it, not forget as well, Drillistico Jackknife powerbombed AR Fox onto the fucking steps. Yeah. Just for reasons. And, and then he went into the, like underneath the <laughs> steps and like just hid in there for a bit, like yeah, inside the see, steps. You could see Rush, uh, you could see Rush just like shouting at him, "Lift him up, lift him up!" Fucking <laughs> um, orders his brother. So the match was kind of weird. So there was a bit of a botch at the finish. So Drisco kind of kicked out at like two point nine, and the ref's like, "Oh no, that was definitely three. Yeah. And AR Fox looked like, "Wait, what?" That he was like, "That's a two And then the ref's like, "No, no, you won." He's like, "Oh." <laughs> And you could see he looked happy, but also terrified. Oh, shit. And then apparently Roosh just, like... Roosh went made a sn- business for himself. Well, no, he, apparently he made, like, a snap decision that him and Drillisco were going to beat them down to get the heat back. Yeah. Because the, like, the finish got fucked up. But, they, but like, they, they basically took a few liberties, I think. Well, oh, Roosh, shit. like, grabbed the referee by his shirt and, like, ragged them to the point where he ripped the referee's shirt, like, right down the middle. And it was lovely uh, Stefan Smith as well. Was it? I thought it was Mike Posey. Oh, it was Mike Posey. It was Mike Posey. Sorry. Yeah, he had a fucking terrible night. More yeah, later. we'll talk about um, that later. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, and then AR Fox like got thrown into the barricade, and Roosh told like Drillis to go to hit him with a chair, and he just launched the chair like in into AR Fox's face essentially, and then Roosh turned around and just like just like walloped Blake Christian across the head with a chair. What? Yeah, like unprotected chair, chair shot to the head. He got suspended for it, like naturally. Um, Fucking hell! It was like it was kind of like, as I say, you thought he was in Arena Mexico. It was like the Mexican mentality of 
oh shit, we need to get our heat back. Because, like, Roosh and, well, uh, L- LFI are essentially being, like, primed up to be, like, the, the top heels of Ring of Honor. And then, <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. Um, well, then everybody got suspended. Yeah, R- Roosh, Roosh is, like, we, we say it every week, Roosh is batshit crazy. Like, he's a fucking lunatic. Really? Like, he, he's, he's he's awesome. He's, like, one of, like, legit, one of my favorite wrestlers in AEW. But he, he's it's just, like... nutcase. He's just a murderer. He, he just <laughs> hit people. Actual murderer. Yeah, like, he had a match with Hangman. It, it was just him and Hangman seeing who could hit each other harder. <laughs> and, like, yeah, he, so... he, just, he just, like, at one point, just, like, booted them as hard as he could in the face. Jeez. He's fucking, he's awesome. You'd like him, Troy. Yeah. Right, like so moving that. on. Moving on then, we had um, the, the women's match. We had uh, Athena defeated Mercedes Martinez in a really fun match. This was it's just, so again, hard, this, this is a very hard-hitting pay-per-view. Um, a lot, a lot of yeah. matches because people just smacking each other real hard. This was really good fun. Um, yeah, Athena won. So that gives uh, Athena something to do now, which is great. Uh, I'm really excited to see where she goes as, mm-hmm. as Ring of Honor Women's Champion. Yeah. There, there was that really cool bit as well where Athena pulled the, uh, pulled like the table cover off and like as the referee was kind of like dealing with something, I, th- I think Mercedes was going for, she was going for something on she and Athena like pushed her so the back of her head hit the table and then she just like hit the old face to pick up the win. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see these two have a rematch. They had so much good, like such a good match. A match that I wasn't all that excited for but I ended up enjoying more than most of the matches on this card uh, Swerve Not Glory taking on Shane Taylor promotions accusations false accusations this was excellent um, you, you had time... two hops in there and you're saying you weren't fucking excited for it <laughs> no, so, like, I didn't really know what was going on there was no like sort of stakes behind it or anything and like Swerve and Keith Lee are kind of in that weird place aren't they, they but they anytime did. anytime that they... Shane Taylor goes for a crossbody off the top rope and Keith Lee just catches him yeah, <laughs> Shane Taylor's a big fucking lad. There he is, <laughs> bigger than Keith. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. What what was um what what I really liked about this was because obviously it didn't really have much build. I knew that um, Shane Taylor and Keith Lee used to be the pretty boy killers in yeah. Ring of Honor, and obviously Keith Lee got signed, so they like lost the tag title shot. But I didn't know how much like there was kind of actual sort of animosity behind the scenes about it. I was, and I think. Cred- well, credit to Ian Riccoboni and Caprice Coleman for like sort of like painting that picture hmm. and also for like the crowd were obviously aware of it because they're both Texas guys right. and it was in Texas so like they'd they worked like indies around there as well so there was there was the knowledge of it um, and credit to like the way the match was built where every time Keith and Shane got like in the ring from across from one another like Keith Lee was kind of like playing almost a heel, like he was tagging out because like everyone wanted to just see Shane Taylor murder Keith. Oh shit! Um, also, JD Griffey is fucking awesome. Oh, More of him, really, please. He really impressed me. Yeah, he was very in a match where it was like two big boys and Swerve, and he was the other guy. He really stood out like quite a lot in a good way. And, like he really impressed. and his whole gimmick is like MMA fighter. Yeah. So it was like nice. it, it was like while um while like he had um. Swerve, like just being a horrible bastard. Yeah, JD Griffey just like lock, like wrapping well, around him like a fucking slot and trying to choke him out. It, it was kind of it was kind of like a fascinating combination of, of people. So you had obviously Shane Taylor and Swerve and Keith Lee, who are big boys, big power guys. Uh, Swerve's got that sort of like really low center of gravity when the way he moves and the way he sort of strikes and attacks. And then JD Griffey's just this like big wiry like limbs everywhere sort of guy who just like grapples everyone. And it was like it was really cool to see these four these four guys going at it. It was it was great. It was a great contrast of styles. Uh, and yeah, and at the end of the match, um, a bit of a sort of they try to do it. Swerve walks out on Keith Lee and like abandons him, and he's like, "Ah, you're gonna get beat now." And then Keith Lee's like, "Nah, fuck that," <laughs> and goes to him. Um, BBC's JD Griffey for the win. <laughs> he, he used he used JD Griffey as a weapon against Shane Taylor first, and then <laughs> yeah, just did a fucking murder on JD Griffey. So that was but, fun. yeah, we're having our glory of. Split up. Yeah, I think I think that might be the final nail in the coffin for Swerve and Our Glory, if we're being honest. Uh, next up, then the Embassy, which is Brian Cage, um, Khan, and your um, your nutrition partner Troy uh, Toa Leona. <laughs> um, they did Peacock Murder, which made me a very sad boy. Yeah, um, just a load of big lads just throwing poor the poor boys around and 
Don't it wasn't, just, it, it wasn't just Don Castle throwing the boys around in this match. It was everyone. Yeah. Um, say, it, say it once, I'll say it again. Get Dalton Castle doing that entrance every fuck. Well, just get Dalton Castle on television every week. Yeah. Just, the man is a license to print money. He's so he's, entertaining. He's, he's so fun. He's, he's, he's so good. But the, yeah, the Brian Cage hit a massive draw claw on, um, I think it was Brandon for the win. Yeah. It was yeah, it was. I, I was I was fearful for this one going in, and I was right to do so. Uh, next up, then yeah. we had the pure rules match, uh, which didn't start like a pure rules match. So within the first thirty seconds, um, Daniel Garcia sort of tactically blew his one warning for an open palms for a closed fist strike because like literally in the first thirty seconds, he just <laughs> lamped you through in the face. So then after like after like three seconds of looking, I like assessing the situation, you just lamps him right back. So they're both on a warning within like the first. <laughs> nice. Match. And then they just decide to go outside and drop each other on the floor for a bit, which again <laughs> isn't very pure rules, but it was very fun. Uh, they, they they told a really good story as well. Uh, user used up all of his rope breaks really early on. He, he was really under the cosh. Uh, I think Garcia only used one the entire match. Um, yeah, he did. And it was like Gar- Garcia getting like a little bit cocky and a little bit sort of overextending himself a little bit, and sort of I think Utah almost like suckers him in a bit, like and, and sort I of. Thought- it's- I thought the finish was fucking brilliant. It was so clever. Oh, didn't Garcia do a pile driver onto the apron as well? Yes. Just, you know, pure rules. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the finish was Garcia locks in the um, the Dragon Slayer sharpshooter that he uses. Um, and he like lent, he, he got a bit cocky and like lent back too far. I was just far enough for you to sort of wrap his arm around his throat and transition into a cross face. And then Garcia wasn't tapping, so Utah locked his other arm in and just like elbowed him in the head till the referee stopped the match. Uh, it was fucking awesome. Okay. These two, I, I, I said like we've had like six months of these two feuding now, and obviously the feuded prior on the end of the Indies. Uh, but like in, within AW and Ring of Honor, we've had six months of feuding. Didn't I they think, go? Didn't they go an hour in one of the Indies last year? He, he did like an hour draw, and then it yeah. was the same week that. I think it was the same week Garcia wrestled Punk. Um, but yeah, I feel like maybe it's time to just sort of like let him let him drift apart a bit, come back to it in like a year or so, and just do it again because they've got just fucking great chemistry on them. Yeah, yeah, I, I get a feeling these guys they're going to be like always sort of opening back around and bumping into each other like throughout their careers. They seem destined to just have a match every now and then where it's just absolutely fucking slaps. Like yeah, KO just... and Sami Zayn. Yeah, yeah, no. but it was it was really fun. Next up, then, holy fuck, <laughs> it was the only way I could describe this match. Basically, um, the yeah. Briscoes versus FTR double dog collar match, the third one of the trilogy. Um, FTR won the previous two, and very little build to this. It was literally um, teased on rampage. Didn't fucking Dynamo, need it. Oh, did it? No, you it never didn't. need a build for these suits to fight. <laughs> It was just literally that an Ask Boys segment at the end of Dynamite, and then like a two minute Briscoes promo on YouTube, and that was it. It was it was done. You know, it was <laughs> that ready. Briscoes promo was fucking brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> Jay's like, we need to say thank you to the Ask Boys for delivering our letter. <laughs> <laughs> but this was th- th- this was the, exceptional. The challenge, the challenge was a Christmas card written in blood. That yeah. was just a really nice fucking touch. Yeah. Um, yeah, this was fucking incredible. I. I'm going to have to rewatch all three matches to try and decide which one's going to be my match of the year because, I'll, spoiler alert, it's between those three. <laughs> um, I, think, I think it's not two. I really like two, but I think the only problem with it was that because it was two out of three falls, it was a lot sort of more methodical, whereas this was just like unadulterated chaos from like... See, I, think this, I think this was fairly restrained until the point where all four guys were just pissing blood. It's, no. it, it was it was a weird match. It, it seemed like they were taking things fairly slow. They were being very like careful with the use of the chains. And like one thing, I'll give them mad props for. So this was a double dog collar match, like two lots of chains. So um, Jay and Dax were uh, collared together, and Mark and Cash were collared together. At no point in this twenty-two minute match did the chain ever get in the way, <laughs> uh, unless it was intentional. Yeah, no, there was there were no fuck ups because the chain was in the wrong no. place or someone wasn't. It, this they, match was. They did. They did that really, perfectly. really good spot where Cash was like, Cash was basically trying to hang Mark over the top rope with the chain, and it was like taut. And to break it, Jay just kind of like threw Dax into the chain, and it was just so, it was just so well executed. There was that 
horrible, horrible superplex onto the outside, onto the onto the stack of chairs. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, this was fucking incredible. And then late, late, towards the end of the match, um, there was a pile of chairs and a table, and Cash and Mark were having like, this sort of back and forth about trying to put each other through the table. And then eventually Cash just got the chain and just flung Mark yeah. off the apron, off the top rope, out to the outside, onto a pile of chairs. Yeah, it was... It was uh, and, then Mark, it, and then Mark didn't move an awful lot after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then... Said, and then, and then Cash starts to so Dax is sort of taking. I think Dax is just on a pal driver in the ring or something, and um, Jay kicked out. So then da- uh, Cash starts throwing chairs into the ring, and you audibly hear him shout to, da- to Dax, "Fucking murder him!" Yeah. Fucking hell! <laughs> um, yeah, I I loved everything about this. I think when one thing AW like, and obviously by proxy Ring of Honor, I've tried to illustrate with dog collar matches is that like how violent they are and how bloody they are and like how that essentially this is like their nuclear option like like a hell in a cell used to be mm-hmm. like a few days yeah. yeah yeah uh, obviously like in the territories way back in like the sort of like 70s mm. and 80s it was a dog collar match or yeah. it was bunkhouse match or something like that they like every time they've gone a dog collar match it's been visceral it's been yeah. gritty and i think for me this might have been the best one they've done what best yeah, dog I mean, collar match? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the fin- I mean, the finish of this was literally Jay Briscoe swimming in his own blood, like choking Dax to like the point of unconsciousness with the chain. Yeah. And and while Cash is like trying as hard as to get in the ring to sort of help Dax and Mark Briscoe is like dead weight lying on the chain. Yeah, so it was so it was that it was that FTR spot. It was like it was like that FTR spot where one of them's in a submission and the other one like tries to put the hand in to help, except Cash couldn't get in the ring because Mark Briscoe was just like literally sitting down on the chain. So Cash couldn't get like past the uh, apron. It was fucking brilliant. It was and, and Dax then Dax didn't tap, he just went out basically. Yeah. Well I know what I'm watching after dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, oh. I wouldn't watch it while you're having dinner. I'd wait until you <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, but, no, I'd I'd say like that's one of this has been one of my favorite shows of the year as well. Hmm. And like, it came with like so few expectations. It was just like I, I literally I was like, okay, it's a Ring of Honor show. They're gonna have some fun matches on there. It the the selling point for me was the FTR Briscoe's match, which, which they only announced only, like last week. Only got announced this week. So prior to that, it was because we everyone was thinking, oh yeah, they'll just do FTR with the Ask Boys or something on the uh, on Ring of Honor. They, they did so many bait and switches for who FTR's op- opponents were, though, that I was genuinely shocked when they announced FTR Briscoe's 3. And I was even more shocked when they announced FTR Briscoe's 3 was a dog collar match. Yeah. Uh, right, we'll move on then. Uh, that again, if we, if we haven't conveyed this across to you, dear listener, please go and watch that match. It was yeah. fucking <laughs> phenomenal. Um, next up then, Samoa Joe taking on Rock Hard. I hate that nickname, Juice Robinson. Yeah, Fuck that. off. <laughs> no one wants to be rock hard. No one wants that. <laughs> and he, yeah. he has he has like his Bullet Club t-shirt and it says like rock hard club and it's like oh no that sounds no, like that type of thing the police raid at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> this was really good though. I, I feel like everything after that FTR and Briscoe's match not suffered but I mean yeah this 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 kind of thing I mean, was to follow. Dead. it was like, fine but it was it was it kind of felt like I'd been sent off to die this match and it was like oh fuck out you I mean he was yeah. juice juice was been thinking like how the fuck are we gonna follow that I think they had a really fun it, match oh, it was like, it was an ex- it was an excellent match really it, was, it was it was it was a lot better than I mean it wasn't juice match against hangman wasn't bad it just didn't get any reaction and this got a lot more I can because Samoa Joe is that kind of guy he's got enough cred hasn't he Joe with the ring on a crowd that Anything he does to anyone and anyone any, anyone does to him will get a reaction because Joe is Ring of Honor. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I think Joe was the right guy to send out after that match because people right, people were exhausted, understandably, but you can still get up for Samoa Joe in a Ring of Honor ring. Yeah, that's it. And the the finish as well was fucking awesome. Where Joe like hung him up on the uh, top rope, um, and then like they were sort of like struggling, weren't they? So Joe was trying to like get him up for the muscle bus there, and Juice was like fight with everything he had, and then Joe just like lifted him up like a child, and it's like yeah, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, poor Tony Storm, just finding a husband. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and then the final match, the main events, uh, Chris Jericho versus Claudio Castagnoli for the Ring of Honor World title. If Claudio loses, he must join the Jericho Appreciation Society. And um, Daddy Magic said earlier, he had another purple hat like Jake Hager's. When he does join Jericho Appreciation Society, he has to be in a tag team with Hager called Hat Trick. Fuck. Yeah. And, he, and he has to wear the purple hat. They said they trademarked the name for it as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, we had that. We had that awesome like brawl with top top flight in a two point as well, didn't we? Well, yeah, they just had a big fight as well. Yeah, yeah. But t- Daddy Magic shouted at uh, Darius, "You want to take a swing at me?" And Dante just come from the background and jawed him. <laughs> <laughs> that was right before that was so. Then that was interrupted by Utah coming out. Wasn't it? that was just before the Utah Garcia yeah, match? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, this match was really fun. Uh, Jericho and Claudio got the chemistry, haven't they? Like the the first match was really good. They were both really good in that four way match, uh, the uh, full gear, which was excellent. And this match had a, a very, I, I would say, sh- I would say, shocking finish. It was different. I know it's been divisive on like the internet. I, I, I really liked it. Brilliant. I thought yeah. it was fucking excellent. Do you um, know? Have you have you seen this, Troy? Do you know how this how this match ended? I will so, be right, watching it. So earlier in the match, yeah. uh, Claudio goes for the giant swing, which is obviously Claudio's big fan favorite move. And as he's doing it the first time, Jericho manages to reverse it into the walls. Of Jericho. Yeah, he just hooks the legs. He's going round. It's great. Right. So then later on, later on in the match, Jericho hits. He hits him with a baseball bat. Claudio kicks out the of, of the baseball bat shot. Big like big crowd pop, and then he, he locks in the giant swing. He does thirty one rotations. Fuck it, hell of the giant swing, and then and on the thirty first rotation on commentary, he, he was in it for thirty seven seconds. Yeah, and on on the thirty first rotation, Jericho taps out in the giant swing. Oh shit! Oh okay, that's different. Yeah. It was yeah. incredible. I don't, really I, I don't, I don't because... dislike it. It's just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Jericho was like, just sort of like flailing his arms throughout the whole time, wasn't he as well? Like he really sold it well. Nice. Yeah. Um, I, I, they had a really good match. Like that, as we said, these two have got like amazing chemistry together. Um, I'd, I'd like to see a third match just because the one-on-one. Uh, right, we'll wrap it up there then, uh, because we're we going real long on that. Was a lot of wrestling. Um, just one quick thing before we go to the didn't next mention, just to jump in, there was only one title that didn't change hands on that show. Yeah, that was the TV the title. That Everything was TV else title. was a chart title change. No way that yeah. is. Big no way reset. Samoa was the king of TV. Correct. <laughs> As you ain't were, no one, ain't no one taking that title off, Joe. Uh, before we you go on to the tell next, tell section... can't, he can't fucking keep that title. You're gonna tell Samoa Joe he's got to lose to the guy that Kevin Owens murdered on a debut in NXT. Yeah, true. CJ Paul. No, Samoa Joe forget. murdered in his debut in NXT. Kevin Owens. Yeah. Um, right. Before we move on to the next section, Jay, quickly, uh, marks out of ten for Death for Dishonor. Let's try final battle. Um, I'd, I'd give it a solid eight. I think I'd go eight and a half. Think, I, yeah. I, I, it was it was a solid show. Um, I feel like I mark it down for the finish to um, the opening match, but I think everything on everything on the pre-show was really fun. My only negative, yeah, my only negative was the finish, the finish of the first match, and Don Castle lost. So you know, yeah, I, and also like I think I think the placement of FTR and Briscoes should have been at the end. So Chris, Chris, Chris Jericho getting main event, main event flashbacks. Yeah, nothing should. Yeah, you think he would have fucking end from the WrestleMania 18. Chris Jericho um, saying, "Oh God, it's happening again." Yeah. Oh God, it's another Rock Hogan shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, right. I, I thought it was a really good show, uh, yeah, and it, uh, every, every Ring of sh- Ring of Honor show this year has been very good. Yeah. Uh, no. Right. We'll move on. We'll have a quick break then uh, before we move on to some news. If you're on Jack's radio. Uh, and if you're not on Jack's Radio, you should be listening to us on Jack's Radio because you get some banging tunes to go along with your wrestling. Uh, we'll have some Ghost, some Run the Jewels, and some Lincoln Park to take you into part two. Okay, and we're back. Right, we're going to bring you some quick fire wrestling news. And luckily, there's very little to talk about this week in terms of wrestling news. Like only some massive, massive stories. So we'll start with the we'll start with like the big one, the the the, the, the nuclear bomb, uh, which is according to the Wrestling Observer. Uh, Sasha Banks is reportedly done with WWE, uh, having both parties having failed to come to terms on money. Uh, obviously, Sasha Banks is set to appear at Wrestle Kingdom 17 in Tokyo next month. It is believed her contract runs until the end of the year, until January. However, it is not known whether WWE have the ability to or if they will extend her contract and put a freeze on it because she hasn't been like like when people are injured, basically. Mm-hmm. 
So it's a lot, a lot of. I mean, it's it's this is this is going to be one of like the, the biggest talking points of the next sort of thirty odd days. And like, where is she going to show up? Is she is she done? No one knows anything for sure. Um, like, there's based, so many. Based on, sorry, based on things that she said, I feel like that maybe it's a, a contract actually expiring. Not like, like then, not like um, as in they've already tacked on the time. Right, okay. Because she, she's um, done the she's done the thing, and she where she's trademarked all these new names and all this new bits and bobs. And I, I remember a couple of um, a, a couple of like news sources put out closer to the time that her contract was due to expire, like July, August sort of thing. Well, it was it was this was re- it was reported in summer that she wasn't taking bookings until January, and that was that was a date yeah. that's been set in stone for some time now. Yeah, and I, d- I doubt. Based on like what happened with like Pac, for example, where he walked out and then he just like went, "All right, well, you got eighteen months here." <laughs> I, I doubt that. I doubt like the like the start of Triple H is kind of like one of like being the kind of like top dog in WWE. I doubt he wants that kind of negative press where someone's like, "Look, we want to leave," and he's going, "Nah, you're all right." Mm. Yeah. It, um... it, it, it makes more sense for them to kind of want to like keep the morale up for the backstage people. It's Andrew a shame. Uh, I just, it's just, obviously she'll like it would be really exciting to see her at Wrestle Kingdom and anything she does subsequently in New Japan or anywhere else, depending on where she goes. Um, it's a shame if if that is it for her with with WWE, um, because. Goes without saying, one of the best on, on the women's roster. No, um, she built that division. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and and then, if, she, if 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 she leaves in such a, if her last act as a WWE performer is to just drop the belts and walk out the company, that's a, mm. a shitty way to go for someone who's put so much in. Yeah, like part of me wants like, and it's probably just wishful thinking. I don't want that to be the kind of the last act there because she did so much for for that women's division. It would be kind of shitty note to end on. Part of me just wants like one last rumble appearance, and then she can ride off into the sunset. She can just come back and do the job to Charlotte, and then that's it. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the only thing, the only thing to add on to this is obviously there's a, a a sort of added bit of intrigue that Soraya is picking a partner for a show in January to mm. face Britt Baker and Jimmy Hayter. Now, if that's not Sasha Banks or Mercedes Monet or whatever she's calling herself at that point. Fucking God help whoever comes through that curtain. <laughs> if that's Thunder Rosa and they're trying to bring her back as a face, that ain't going to go how, she, how they think God. it's going to go. Oh, God, no. I think I saw something on Instagram the other day. I'm fairly sure Sasha Banks is the guest, the next guest on Bailey's podcast, which will be an interesting right. listen. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, right, moving on. Speaking of what we, we just talked a lot about Ring of Honor, have a little bit more Ring of Honor. Uh, so in the post-match media scrum, thankfully no one battered anyone this time, which is always nice. <laughs> but uh, Tony Khan did announce that they've officially relaunched Honor Club. Um, so, well, not yet. It's, it's been announced it is relaunching. He said sometime at the start of the new year, uh, there's going to be a weekly TV show on on a club, so it's not going to be on television, which for us in the UK makes literally no difference because I'm still watching it on the computer, regardless. Mm. Um, <laughs> and but pay per views are going to be on a 90 day delay, so you're still going to have to fork out for your pay per views on fight. But I mean, I, I would probably have just preferred if it all went on to like Fight Plus or something. But hey, here we are. So isn't isn't that the same price it was before? But you're getting less. Well, you you're still getting like the entire. Like back catalogue of Ring yeah, of still, yeah, you still get you still you still get everything. You just don't get the live shows anymore. Yeah, nah. interesting. Yeah, well, you'll get you'll get the weekly TV live at the show. Yeah. Hmm. So back but back when like we so I got it to I got it to watch um like the first got- AW Ring of Honor show and I got the live pay per view but I didn't get any television shows because the TV shows haven't been on there for a long time because they were on like Sinclair or whatever. Hmm. So they, they, they were basically replacing the pay per views with a live TV show. So it all kind of hinges on what's the quality of that show like basically. I, I think I think as well like if it seems as if there's from from what from like kind of like just sort of like going through the uh, statement they put out um, last night it seems as if there's going to be a lot more on demand content as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. yeah, and you are you are going to get that you are going to get that that whole back catalog as well. So you can go and watch, for example, the, the, the entire of... the, you can go watch the entire Kevin Steen El Jericho feud if you want to like see the best thing in ever rest that's ever happened in wrestling. Basically, if you want to see Neck from the trilogy, yeah, 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you want to see the spot that literally on our watch along nearly made Ryan do a sick. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, and I, I sent him other subsequent gifts from that feud, and he's just been really upset with me. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, th- I think I think one thing as well is there was a lot of kind of stuff that obviously, as you say, with the TV deal, that wasn't on a club, and there was pay per views that were like DVD only, which are going to be on there. So there's going to be a lot more available. What would make sense to me is if they bundle it in with the AW one, like yeah, maybe say for like fifteen quid, you can have them both. Or yeah, yeah. kind of for the two. Yeah, but yeah, fifteen would be still be reasonable. Well, fifteen, because... I like fifteen, fifteen dollars because like yeah, it's like nine ninety nine, isn't it in in the US? So but yeah, it's ninety nine for eight viewers, isn't it? Is it disappointing that it's not a TV deal, considering the lineage I... and the history of Ring of Honor? Should it, well, no, should it not been on well, a TV well, it's, deal? It's, it's never, it's never really been on like mainstream television in the states. Hmm. It was on HD Net, and then it was on Sinclair Broadcasting. Now okay. they're not. As someone who who is only like sort of you know, like, tangentially aware of US television, hmm. I'd never heard of any of those things. Do I heard about Ring of Honor? Right. So it's you not. On, it's, it's, it's like it's like saying one. why isn't it's like why isn't that show that was on Bravo not on ITV? <laughs> yeah, and I, as I, I said, think... for for people like me, on me and you and Jay in the UK, it makes no odds. We're going to be watching mm-hmm. it through fight or something anyway, aren't we? Yeah. So you know, R- Ring of, Ring of Honor's weekly TV show was free on YouTube when, like, during the pandemic and prior to that, anyway. Okay. Um, it was free free on fights and free on YouTube. I think, well, like they had like the highlights on YouTube. Um, I'm just shocked. Yeah. That they've, I, I'm shocked that they've taken this opportunity to put it online, and they've still kept them separate. I thought this would have. I thought Ring of Honor would have come back when an AW Network launched. Hmm. Maybe that. Maybe that's like going to be the kind of like jumping off point for it. Possibly. Maybe this is the test of waters. Who knows? Yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh, like it, as I say, it would make so much sense to kind of like amalgamate the two together, like AW Plus and Honor Club. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe this is a way to get people who used to earlier pay monthly, and then they'll just, they can just slide the extras into it and like the other bits and bobs. Who knows? As, uh, right, as next I say, up, like fifteen quid. That's yeah, do it, do it, cowards. Uh, next up, then a, a nice little happy one. Uh, Jamie Noble wrestled his final match uh, last weekend in his it home. It's, it's actually says his hometown of Charleston, <laughs> West Virginia. He's actually not from Charleston; he's from West Virginia. So it's, it's his home state. Okay. Um, so he teamed with Braun Strowman and the Brawling Brutes to defeat the Bloodline minus Roman Reigns because he ain't doing no job. Um, <laughs> And the match, quite nice. he got he got the pin on Sami Zayn for the win, which is quite nice. That's as well. nice. That's a lovely way yeah. to end it for him. You know, what I would really like him just to beat CM Punk again one more time. <laughs> <laughs> just sign Punk for two days, drop him out to Jimmy Noble, and then release him again. <laughs> just, just literally do that entire match like from Ring of Honor again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, so, so that's lovely. It's nice to see Jamie get his because again, we, we we talked about this. Was it me and you, Troy? We talked about this a while back, um, and we said like he sort of like just sort of faded away in WWE, didn't he? he yeah, sort of it's a like... shame, man. Like, is he like I remember going back and watching like a lot of his stuff with the Cruiserweight Championship. It was really, really good, man. Um, but yeah, he just it was that kind of J and J security thing, and then it was suddenly. Just gone. He was, he was just. He was just gone. He was yeah. just a backstage guy then. And there was no was it, yeah. no announcement over it. No, he's moving into. It was just. No, he's gone. So yeah, it was a shame. But this this is a nice nice note to sign off on for him. Yeah. Uh, next up, then something that might allay some of our fears from the, from the previous article. According to Dave Meltzer, former AEW Women's Champion Thunder Rosa is hoping to return to the ring in February, so she might miss the window for being Soraya's surprise partner. Uh, I mean, she's been out with the back injury since August, so she's been out a fair while. Obviously, they, they just officially stripped her of the women's title uh, a few weeks back. Um, yeah, it's to be interesting. She, she she put a picture up on Instagram of her lifting weights, like she's just started doing some like weight training, sort of building her strength back up, and she she claims to be ready for a quote big 2023. So we'll remains to be seen. Yeah. I mean, it's this is this is such it, a weird one, isn't it? Because like, is one part one? of a big 2023. Jamie hates a clothesline her into oblivion. <laughs> but it's gonna be such an odd one because, like, since she's been gone, like fan sort of opinion on her is somewhat soured a bit. I think. I think. Like, I think it's weird, isn't it? Because like she, she like announced that like she was wasn't gonna be at all out on like the go home episode of Dynamite, which was weird because it was as I made like the joke about yeah, she lost a smile. Um, it, it was just. At timing wise, it was odd because she was still doing angles, building up to the match right up to the end, like 
to the last bit. So, yeah. I don't know. But then, obviously, like, there was other stuff that kind of come out with, like, uh, Britt Baker saying about uh, being a bit toxic and stuff like that. And I think that's why a lot of fan well, sentiments... Well, the, 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 sort of, the sort of mostly confirmed rumour, isn't it, that when she broke Jimmy Hitter's nose, she then, like, hid in the toilet so that Jimmy Hitter wouldn't come and yeah. batter her afterwards. Yeah, she yeah. didn't. She, instead of apologising, she just went and hid in the toilet. So, apparently, oh, oh, again... Actual like, MMA fighter, Thunder Rosa. Because she, because she was trying to work through this injury, um, she couldn't extend properly on her suplex. And then, as Jamie Hayter brought her down, she just sort of fell on top of her. Oh, dear. And, like, basically squashed her nose. And then, apparently, she went and just hid in the toilet for, like, half an hour because she thought Jamie Hayter was going to come and batter her in the, in the locker room. <sighs> so, yeah, we'll see what happens when she comes back, eh? Because we, we could have another CM Punk situation on our hands here. Who knows? Yeah, Jamie, Hayter, Jamie Hayter's nails, like, isn't she? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. That, that's, that's, that's gonna be that's gonna be a fascinating thing to see in February, uh, right? And then our final piece of news um, for fans of big meaty men who slap meat. There we have possibly the first sort of soft confirmed match for WrestleMania 39. Uh, it's been widely reported that one match set for the WrestleMania 39 is Brock Lesnar versus Gunther. Yes, yes. please. Are you ready for two uh, meat castles to just <laughs> collapse into one another? I, I can't wait for Gunther to chop the purple off Brock Lesnar. He's going to chop that fucking tattoo chop right the off the Chop the top off him. <laughs> uh, so Gunther actually did an interview a while back uh, where he said that this was one of his dream matches. Mm. He said basically Brock was an inspiration to him when he was getting into the business. Uh, he's been, you know, he's, he's he said he's like one guy who can really push him and challenge him. And yeah, this is going to be this is going to be an absolute that is slobber knocker in it. Physical as <laughs> Fuck! I, can't I wonder whether Brock. That. I wonder whether Brock's gonna be into it though, because he usually likes like wrestling smaller guys, doesn't? He? True, he, but he like usually, his and Bobby's match usually looks fun. basically just just find a way to condense Walter Dragonov into like six and a half minutes. <laughs> just get all of that offense, but in six and a half minutes, <laughs> it's, it's it's like someone's used a red mushroom on Ilya Dragonov. <laughs> <laughs> <Brock's close. laughs> But yeah, I mean that's that's one that's gonna that's gonna put some butts and seats in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, man, that's gonna be that's gonna be a lovely, lovely stuff. Um, yeah. So WrestleMania, it's it's already off to a it's it's from what we, from what we've seen, it's it's shaping up pretty well um, with the one match that's been announced so far. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Uh, I think that'll do us for news. Then we're gonna. Uh, have another very quick break on Jack's radio. We'll have some more music. We'll have some Jimmy Eat World. We'll have some Coheed and Cambria. And we'll have some Fallout Boy. You lucky people. Okay, we're back into part three. Uh, right, part three, we're going to do a few little talking points. This is our sort of, like, little, a little more informal, a little more sort of casual sort of segment of the show where we just sort of have a little chat about some of the hottest topics in wrestling. Uh, a few little bits of more. We've got a few special ones here because this is probably the last time this year that it's going to be not just me and Jay doing doing this segment. So we'll bring Troy and we'll do a little, maybe little 2002 review, like very quick. We, we, we are going to do our proper podcast, like match of the year. Um, and we're going to do our sort of awards as well, which we're probably, are we doing them in between Christmas and New Year again this year? I think so, yeah. We have to because like there's a chance that AW or someone might slip a banger in on like the 28th of December or some shit like that, isn't <laughs> it? So, you know, they've done GCW, it before, didn't they? <laughs> GCW's got a show on New Year's Eve. Oh, and they on New Year's Day as well. <laughs> so we're not safe, like because Ram- like Rampage, Nick, Nick Rampage Wayne could do some idiot. mad shit on like three minutes to midnight or something like that. I'm like, oh for fuck's sake! <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so we'll see. We'll, we'll hold off as late as we can before everyone has to go, like, go back to work. But yeah, we are going to keep an eye out in that sort of in the in-between times when you're just eating chocolate all the time. We'll uh, we'll have some some end of year content out for you there, hopefully. <laughs> um, we'll also be eating chocolate. I've, I've got like a full time cabbage here as that I'm just going to fucking dive into. It's going to be great. Yes, boy. Um, <laughs> so talking point number one. I mean, I know this has been a Ring of Honor heavy podcast this week. Um, apologies if you don't give a fuck about Ring of Honor, but we, we will not talk about it as much next week. I, I can't promise you that. Uh, first point. First you, you topic. You know the way AW kind of interjected Ring of Honor into the program for about three months. Yeah, there's fuck. <laughs> we're just doing all of that, but in one episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, so first question, first talking point with Ring of Honor getting a weekly TV show, should Tony Khan hand over the book, and if so, to whom? Yes, to me. Yes. <laughs> we don't want Luffer Underground. Luffer Underground. <laughs> so basically, Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor is now sort of, as Tony Khan himself has said, it's separating itself away from AW now. It's not going to have as much Ring of Honor on AW. Uh, it's becoming kind of its own entity. 
should Tony Khan basically not book it because he does so much anyway? Yes. He said he's going to, hasn't he? Um, I'd have it. I'd quite like to see. Um, if anyone says delirious, maybe... they're going in the waiting room. Right. <laughs> if anyone says delirious, they're going into the waiting room. <laughs> I, 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 um, I, I'd quite like to see them have like a sort of like booking committee with some of the X Ring of Honor guys they've got there, like BJ Whitmer, Christopher Daniels, Jerry Lynn. So I, so I had one yeah. name on my on my mind, and it was Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn as well, exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like if they had like a committee, maybe I'd thro- throw some Owen Joe in there just for the lulls. Mm. Um, what do you want to Joe? Take us Kevin Nash book his Ring of Honor TV title. <laughs> 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 Kevin Nash book that he gets all the belts. <laughs> so the plan is I beat Claudio in 45 seconds, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I just have a three year title um, and then retire. <laughs> I mean, like... the, the other person, obviously, he's very fucking busy, but that would be quite good to book it, would be Excalibur. Mm. Just turn Ring of Honor into PWG. Yeah, just, just do a mystery vortex every year. That'd be great. Yeah, get 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 PWG on Honor Club, you cowards. Um, Can I throw out a wild card? And if I mean, I'm talking like a worst case scenario, not a worst case scenario for like what would happen, but if if, yeah. if a worst case scenario comes to light and someone can't wrestle again, Adam Cole, yeah, so shout, yeah. If he if he yeah. if he if, if he is in the point where he's out long term or he can't go anymore or he mm. has to step away from the from the in ring part of the business, I would love him to have some still have some input. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I, he would. Much prefer to wrestle, think, but I think if he steps away from like the ring, he's probably going to become like a full time streamer. Mm. He's just going to become like the world's first professional Super Mario RPG player. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. So when when all like the when, right. all, like, the, when, all, right. the, when all the brawl out stuff was happening, like at, at that time, Adam Cole was live on stream playing <laughs> Super Mario RPG, and he was just there in chat, like he was just asking chat, like, so uh, chat, how how do I um how do I find out how many frog coins I've got? <laughs> <laughs> like see a pub in the books and like fucking webbing each other all over Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, has uh, anyone said? Has anyone said um, Nigel McGuinness yet? No, no, that's also a very also good show. Good show. Just get anyone who wrestled in Ring of Honor in like the early two thousands, basically, uh, yeah. and just bring them in. And um, whoever hey, will make Fraser. Tony, whoever will make Tony, whoever will make Tony Deppman champion, basically, is, is who I want. <laughs> I really hope that Tony Deppman being sat in the crowd. Um, yeah, we didn't talk about that. Tony Depp was sat in the crowd watching during the Samoa much. Joe and Juice Robinson, and them making a big deal about how Tony Depp was like, well, they, they literally said like he was like the last great TV champion of like the Ring of Honor reign, like before. I can't wait till I can't wait till Tony Depp comes back to the UK so we can give Troy typhoid again. <laughs> Slap the fucking taste out of his mouth. Tony Depp, <laughs> okay, for anyone who doesn't know, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Like Mayor the Gremlin on Troy kept fucking grokking on him. Um, <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> Troy, Troy, Troy's covered in at least at least two of Tony Devon's bodily fluids. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly more. We don't know. A minimum of two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. So I mean, I think we, we kind of kind of all settled on a bit of a consensus. I think everyone's first pick would be Jerry Lynn, um, Sanjay Dutt, maybe. You know. Oh, Sanjay is a fucking very good shot. But then let, let, let the problem with Sanjay is, you know, for a fact that Jay Lethal is going to come up, come over and just put himself as champion for but like. Then, then we could end up in a nightmare scenario with Jeff Jarrett's running Ring of Honor. Oh, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want Ring of Honor to be TNA. It just, it just becomes like 2009 TNA. I want the gonna... Battle Royals. I want the fucking cage match where you've got to handcuff people to the cage. I want. Like, hang on, why is, why is why is Jeff Jarrett fighting Kurt Angle again for the custody of Kurt's children? <laughs> I want Elevation X. I want King of the Mountain. I want all that good stuff. Oh, my God. No. We, we've just, we've just saved Ring of Honor. Maybe. We don't want to kill it again. What, what, what else did they have that was fucking batshit crazy? Electrified Steel Cage. They had the blindfold match. They had the, the Fish Market Street fight. Yeah. They had the they blindfold had... Steel Cage match. They had the match of 10,000 tacks. Yeah, because Monsters Ball, because do Monsters, Monsters Ball, that was good. Everyone, everyone liked Monsters Ball; it was fun. Everyone does like Monsters Ball or Full Metal Mayhem. It's just TLC. Oh my god, I'm still good. Like there was meant to be a match in TNA back in like 2011, and it was the Motor City Machine Guns versus the Hardys versus what were the Young Bucks uh, in in basically a TLC match. 
and nice. so, like and people got injured and it ended up like not happening, it ended up being like a different match. It was like fuck that's that was the one that got away. That was yeah, the one man. match we never got that, that never happened. It, and that would have been so good. The young bucks ended up getting cougared by fucking Tara. Oh god, don't remind me. Um Generation Me. Fucking oh, bad. sad times. I'm gonna go a little cry after this now. Thanks, <laughs> um <laughs> uh, right, Thanks we'll a lot, then. Tasty's crying. <laughs> we'll put Ring of Honor we'll put Ring of Honor to one side, just like Tony Khan probably should have done about six weeks ago. Um <laughs> <laughs> And we'll move on to awesome. our next and probably final talking point, um, which I'll kind of combine these two. So uh, I'll, I'll talk to Troy first because me and Jay talked a lot this week about Ring of Honor. So Troy, two questions: How have you enjoyed wrestling? Or, like, what have you enjoyed from wrestling in 2022? And what would you like to see happen in 2023? Uh, I think I've enjoyed the variety of wrestling uh, this year. I, I think it's safe to say that we've certainly exposed you to different facets of wrestling that yeah, you've maybe absolutely. not otherwise seen before. You've converted me into, I wouldn't say a, a lover of deathmatch wrestling, but death, I certainly... Deathmatch I, I, I certainly, I certainly imp- appreciate it a hell of a lot more. Um, I, I, I heard the rumour you went down to Fargo Village and hit someone with a light tube the other week, I, just, I, just I, because I, you had the itch for it. can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Fargo Village, fucking hell. <laughs> Is that, a, is that where the range is? <laughs> nah, it's the other side of town, mate. Sure, just um, bleeding, all, bleeding all over the fucking tat in the range. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the, the, I think the variety of wrestling this year, I think um, I've had a lot of other promotions and, and wrestlers in particular um, highlight to me and exposed to me. Uh, I've watched a hell of a lot more GCW this year. Um which has been really, really enjoyable. I think the TNT and GCW kind of collaboration show earlier this year really put a spotlight on on just how good uh, some of the stuff is that they're putting out. Um, so that's been good. And generally getting about to a lot more indie promotions like up and down the country as well. Um, prior to this year, the only independent promotion I went to was Wrestling Resurgence. Um my local one in Leicester, and I've had the opportunity to get to so many this year. Um, and it's been awesome. Really, really good. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing a hell of a lot more of that next year. It, it, it's an odd one, isn't it? Because like, from people on the outside looking in, it's easy to say, oh, look, the British wrestling scene, it's sort of not where it was a few years ago. It's like the star power's not there. There's been a big talent train. But if you look if you look a little deeper and if you scratch behind the surface, like it's actually in quite rude health. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, all right. There, there, there aren't like there aren't like as many Rampage Browns or you know Trent Sevens knocking around at the way like three or four years ago. But the next generation's right there, and like your your next favorite wrestler is just just there waiting for you to to discover them. Yeah, absolutely. And the answer is take me first because take this is greatness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, it's mad this year. Like I managed to get to so much like indie and, and kind of major and stuff like I didn't think I'd ever get to see a New Japan show but I went to two days of it in London this year and it's the Aussie Open fight FTR it's the Aussie Open against spoiler alert it's <laughs> within my match, match of the year category <laughs> <laughs> that's an absolute shock I mean I can't believe you can't believe you said that but yeah it, it's yeah. just been it's been really really good uh, to, to be exposed to just how much wrestling is uh, how much wrestling is out there and also specific wrestlers that i just was not aware of or had heard and, and never <laughs> never watched um but to, to do like the podcast of like guys like you that have known about these people for you know a hell of a lot longer than me and and to, for you to kind of recommend oh this person that person this tag team that show that particular match so yeah just having well, my eyes well, open I mean, to it and, and if i can sort of use this as a way to sort of plug our community this is what's been so beautiful to see not just like for yourself but for me and for everyone we, we have built a community on our discord mm. server and and it has led to people getting exposed to things they've never seen before like yeah. i've i've never watched gcw show before this year and like aaron's brought that in and he's, he's shown us all that yeah and like me and jay have brought you you, you both to tnt mm-hmm. and you've, we've shown you that and like everyone who's touched that has, has come away with a a wider experience in the world of wrestling and, and in uk wrestling in particular and it's it's been really wonderful to see it sort of like having this sort of sort of collaborative it knock on impact of reigniting everyone's passion for wrestling 100 percent, 100 percent. couldn't agree more uh, and so just uh just to finish us off anything you want to see in 2023 particularly anything you want it could be anything as simple as do you want to see more of a certain type of thing do you want to see someone in particular win a certain belt anything uh oh god that's that's a big old question 
Um, I'd just like it's very to, open. It is very open. <laughs> I would just like to keep seeing more wrestling generally. Um, I want to see an AEW show over here. That's likely to well, it is going to happen. It's, it's confirmed. They've not told us what the enough. fucking thing is. Yeah, yet, but yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to that. Um, when it happens, uh, in terms of what Ricky Starks, all of the belts. That's that's a common thing, isn't it? That's um, a that's a meme. That's, that's a, a, that's yeah. a thing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I I I put I pitched the team of um, Ricky Starks and Dalton Castle just to like get everyone drowned and drip a little bit. That'd be nice. What about? Ricky Starks and Pretty Deadly and doing absolutely deadly. Well, I don't think Pretty Deadly will even WWE anytime soon, mate. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, I mean, it's not they've got jobs, but you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> shut up. You know what I mean. <laughs> also, the idea of Ricky Starks and Dalton Castle and matching jumpsuits. Yes. <laughs> Ma- matching purple jumpsuits with like little gold chains hanging off them. Just trying to out peacock each other. <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> The strut alone of that people like in frenzies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my um, god! Uh, and I think other things we've got to come next year. Like you've got Cody's going to come back at some point. I mean, it mm-hmm. feels like that was like we're, we've only scratched the surface I, of, of what Cody can do on his yeah. return to WWE. With, like within within WWE, I really want to see Cody win the Rumble. Mm. Like I, I think it's, it's. Do you think we're nailed it, on for a Cody Rhodes World Title run next year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Apparently, the apparently the working plan. Which obviously hasn't been confirmed, but it's kind of been alluded to by a few like wrestling sources, is um, or wrestling news sources, I should say. I don't have any sources. Um, ju- just most of them we covered. Um, <laughs> but right, everyone, the, like, thank the, you for joining us. I know <laughs> the, kind of, the kind of um thing that's been alluded to is that Roman's going to wrestle two nights. He's going to defend the title on one night and then he's going to wrestle Dwayne on the other. Hmm. I really no, actually, I really like the idea that he like he beats the rock on the first night like and then in his arrogance he, he, he agrees to fight Cody on the second night and Cody takes the title off him. Yeah. That would mean that would mean that Cody wouldn't win the rumble and I think the story oh, he would. was so like it, it's sim- it's a similar kind of vein to Drew isn't it when he won the rumble like this guy yeah. comes comes into the rumble he wins it he just has like a juvenile of momentum to get him to WrestleMania. It would mean that Cody Rhodes should be considered better than The Rock at that point. I mean, mm. when did The Rock solve racism, mate? <laughs> right, Didn't. end it there. Fucking hell. <laughs> 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 uh, right, the yeah. The Rock's only got a tattoo on his shoulder, not his fucking neck. <laughs> Coward. What if, the Rock comes um, out, what if The Rock comes out with a neck tattoo? And just... uh, what, what if The Rock comes out with a Brahma bull neck tattoo? Oh god, that's that's the darkest timeline. Right there. <laughs> or what if Cody comes out with it with a um, like similar to the Brahma Bull, but just his logo with like smoke coming out the eyes or something? It's like, it's like an entire sleeve, but it's just that neck tattoo logo just stretched over its entire arm, like a, like a, like when you resize a, what, like what a, if, what a, if a you picture. <laughs> and the big like purple bit that was on his arm from him not doing a bloodletting is just like a United States flag. It's all like pixelated because he's like stretched it too far and it's like gone all down his arm. Because <laughs> he's just, got too small. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> right, on that note, I think we are going to leave it there, everybody. Uh, like I said, me and Jay are gonna I think I mean I'm I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of writing you off here, Troy. Like you like you've been like going off an a, a William Regal style injury angle, but um <laughs> You never know. We might, we might find. I mean, I'm just assuming you're going to be mad busy for the next few weeks. It's Christmas, but we'll, we'll um, we'll we'll try and get we we'll try and get you back on. We'll try and get Aaron on at some point. But he doesn't. He's, he's like he only does what he's contracted to do, doesn't he? He won't. He won't go on the serious podcast. <laughs> just like chatting Aaron, shit on a Wednesday. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron did the news ones. Got a nosebleed. So yeah, we, <laughs> no. we, we we can't do like seven things not to put inside yourself on on this podcast. So. <laughs> So, yeah, Number he, one, he, a potato. Number two, he doesn't, a he doesn't like it, does he? So, um... <laughs> well, well, what we'll do is we'll get Aaron on and we'll get to rank like the top like five deep kissing in wrestling oh, moments God. of the year. No, thank you. <laughs> Best kiss. Number one, Effie and Junkasai. Best kiss dash consensual. Best kiss dash other. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. Right, on, on that note, we will call it a day. Uh, Troy, thank you very much for joining us today, mate. Really appreciate it. Uh, and a, another, an experienced voice, uh, and a, a little bit of a little bit of reprieve from the from the mind fuckery that is the NXT podcast. If you, if you do like uh, if you do like fever dreams and weird Scottish 
things, go and check out the NXT podcast, which is on our feed. Uh, it's it's Troy. It's normally Joe from Damn Vince podcast. Who's no matter what you can say about Joe, he's game for a laugh and he, he's oh, yeah. up for anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he, about he's, he's like if Bob Moore from was from Manchester. Yeah. And Aaron is the sort of nightmare ringleader. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so in, 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 yeah, do check that out if you, if you like your podcast a little more uh, terrifying, like on a more cerebrally destructive level. Um, we will, of course, be back next week for more of the, the slightly more sensible bits of news and everything that you, you've come to know and love. Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank no you worries. for joining us, everyone listening at home. Uh, stay, uh, stay safe, take care, and as always, enjoy your wrestling. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.